I went to bed early because I'm really not very well and I <laughs> woke up and suddenly thought that maybe I should check uh, the YouTube stuff and there's a uh, a number of comments about which I think I ought to comment and in some detail so if you will excuse me I shall this is to Mandy Austin who says my mother had cancer twice and my sister had MS all her life both had long-term treatment and both had first-class care very grateful and happy to the end but they were not pedantic and ungrateful people it is you who is unkind your experience of the NHS is not typical well I hope I hope you're right and I'm delighted that your mother and your sister had great experiences of the NHS and I must say my experiences of the doctors and nurses the cleaners and the staff that I meet in the NHS is very positive for the most part but my experience of the bureaucracy of the NHS is extremely negative and I'm going to explain uh, because I think I have to give some background to this um, I find frankly that any any interaction I have with the NHS fills me with horror and fear and certainly my last period in an NHS hospital left me quite anxious because it was quite clear on many an occasion that the staff who were dealing with me didn't know really who I was or what my issues were. I went into the NHS and NHS hospital about 12, 15 years ago to have an appendix taken out and because I have a problem on the haemophilia scale I knew that there would be issues about my treatment and I briefed the uh, the um, ward uh, people on uh, at, at the time I briefed the doctors who visited me and the nurses that I I needed special treatment and uh, special injections of blood and plasma and all these other bits and pieces and I gave them a card which I'd got from the local um, NHS hospital uh, then I think it was the Churchill and I was being treated in one of the sister hospitals in the same NHS trust but the John Radcliffe didn't talk to the Churchill on that occasion they did their own investigations they took their time during which point my appendix burst and by the time I was in surgery which was about three or four days later I had peritonitis and it was touch and go about whether or not I survived I had I was I was a long time in surgery and all because the bureaucracy was not in order and because one hospital was not talking to another within the same trust and a second issue occurred I mean I, I didn't complain about it I, I was great I was grateful to be around I had such a difficult recovery period and part of that was because the you, you have these drainage tubes put in and when my drainage tube was removed it was one of the most painful experiences of my life uh, I, I, I let out little yells and about five inches of the drainage tube was green and again I thought nothing of it because I'd never had a drainage tube pulled out of my um, abdomen before but when I had cancer treatment about just over a year ago two years ago and when it was time to have my drainage tubes removed I was whimpering about and I said you know this is going to be very painful and uh, are you going to give me lots of morphine and they said it's not going to be painful where did you get that idea and they took it out took it out it was as easy as pie and I said but the last time it was covered in green stuff and they said oh that <laughs> that would have been wrong but of course the time limit has gone for me to make a complaint however in the process of the excellent uh, surgery that I had for cancer treatment um, shortly after I went home all my wounds opened up and I was bleeding copiously copiously um, about a cup of blood every day for about two weeks 
and I was taken back into hospital. Um, and it turned out that I hadn't been given the blood treatment that was required because the haematology um, experts who came to see me, looking a bit like Laurel and Hardy, um, nodded very sagely when I told them to, con to consult the Churchill Hospital, which now I think is the Nuffield Hospital, and, uh, and talked to the haematology department, uh, the haemophilia department, and they didn't. And I know they didn't. And, uh, and, and, and so instead of treating me with specialist drugs, they, uh, they got stuff called tranexamic acid off the shelf and just pumped me with that and thought that would work. Well, it held me together for a week or so, and then, of course, it failed. And again, I was in extraordinary pain. So I left hospital twice um, in the last 15 years in extreme pain that was not really necessary. And, uh, and, and you know, you don't want to, you, you don't want to create a huge fuss. You don't want to create a, a legal trail with the NHS. But nevertheless, at the same time, you want to make it clear that the bureaucracy is failing. The bureaucracy has failed me twice. And certainly that second time when I was in the hospital, I was very anxious and very frightened. I was in a ward full of very odd people. At one point, there was a person in the ward chained to the bed. And I didn't feel safe. That's the bottom line. I didn't feel safe. Now, I'm sure many people have better experiences of the NHS than I have had. And I'm sure many people don't have reason to complain. But you don't complain about the treatment you get from the doctors and the nurses who work incredibly hard and whose names I learnt. And I remember at one point uh, two junior doctors struggling to get blood out of my arm. Two. And, and neither of them could do it in the end. They were shoving needles all over the place. And some in very, very painful places. And they simply gave up in the end. I think it was my last day in hospital. And, you know, you can't complain about that, can you? These are two people who were doing their very best and who were simply charming. But I think when it comes to talking to people, giving them precise instructions, and twice the NHS lets you down, then you've got reason to be fearful. And I, I hope that puts my comments into perspective, Mandy. And I hope I don't come across as unkind. But, you know, uh, when I get paperwork back, which is, which um, cites me by the wrong gender, she, and, and, and when I ask for copies of paperwork which got covered in blood, and I get back paperwork which is completely different, when I got told uh, what sort of cancer I had um, when I was first diagnosed and then get back something completely different when I ask for the same paperwork, um, I begin to worry about the bureaucracy of the NHS. I begin to worry seriously. And I personally don't feel safe. And it's not about the government. And it's not about clapping the people who work tirelessly in the NHS. It's about the people that I know who work in bureaucracy in the NHS. And I think, well, why are they there? What, are they, what have they done to merit the huge salaries that they take home? Surely it's the bureaucrats who are causing the problems. If I'm wrong, I'm very happy to put my hand up, but I'm afraid it's the bureaucrats who don't go on strike, isn't it? It's the bureaucrats who don't complain, and it's the bureaucracy, the failure of one hospital talk to talk to another, the failure of a hospital to talk to a GP surgery, the inadequacy of computer programs, different for the GPs, different for the hospitals, uh, the need for people like Chris Heaton Harris to put through a law in uh, only about 10 or 11 years ago saying that hospitals have a duty to keep a record 
of the um, the progress that they make in in, in 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 care. Why? Because they weren't doing this, and it it just strikes me as madness that there's so much effort going into the NHS, so much goodwill going into the NHS, and it's being stifled and destroyed by chaos. And who presides over the chaos? The bureaucrats. Maybe it's time for bureaucracy to be trimmed and for the bureaucrats who are there to get their act in order, to make sure there's just one bureaucratic system, one computer system for the NHS, not lots of them. To bring everything under one system must be the priority of the next government. To make sure that one hospital talks to another, or rather that it's automatic. Because it is in most other countries. And in many other countries, you go into a private hospital and you're already on the public system. You go into a public hospital uh, and you're already on the public system. It doesn't matter which hospital you go into. But in the UK, Nobody seems to know what you're doing or what they're doing. And, and, and that is linked to a level of arrogance where the patient is considered not to know what they're talking about. The patient, in some cases, is better uh, informed about their disease and their problems than some of the doctors who are treating them. They should be listened to. But Mandy, thank you very much for all your comments. You've certainly produced a lot of comments today. Uh, and um, do keep them coming.